So we're going to go over some of these examples here with how to realize figured base, writing out base position symbols. This particular example is a, is a good challenge because the example is not in the key that the key signature indicates. So this is not in D major or B minor. And because of that, we start having these accidentals written into the figured base. But this is really good for us at this stage of the game because we need to understand what those symbols mean and how we modify. So this is a figured base, meaning it's a baseline, and the numbers in, under here are indicating for you what chord is above that base note. So here we have a D, nothing underneath it. That means root position triad. Where do we get the other notes for the chord? From the other notes that are in the key signature. So if we stack D, F, we got a sharp, so it's actually F sharp, and then an A, that means we have D, F sharp, A, that is a D major triad. So we just write a capital D <coughs> above that chord. This C sharp is a passing tone, should really be in parentheses. We're not going to analyze that. The next chord we analyze is this B natural, which has a 7. That means root position 7th chord. We get the notes by using the rest of the notes that are in the key. So B, D, F sharp, A. I'm going to write that here. B, D, F sharp, A. Analyzing that, minor 3rd, perfect 5th, minor 7th. That means it is a minor 7 chord. So B minus sign 7. Here's where we start to get a little bit more interesting. Here we have an E. It has a 7 and a sharp. The 7 means it's a 7th chord in root position. The sharp means the third above the base is raised a half step. So here we're modifying what is in the key signature. When you see accidentals, whether it be a sharp, a slash, or a flat, it means you're modifying the notes that are in the key signature. So E up a third would be G from the key signature, but we know we want it to be up a half step, so it is G sharp. So here, we have E, G sharp, our B, and we know we have a seventh. So E, G sharp, B, D. That is a major third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. That makes it a major minor seven. We indicate E seven. Our next figured base is just an A with nothing underneath it. That means root position triad. A, C sharp, E. That's an A major triad. Here we have an F sharp with a 6. This is our first chord that is an inversion. This one is not root position. This is, when you see just the 6, it's first inversion of a triad. So how do I do this? This is worth listening carefully. I have F sharp is my bass note. When it says 6, that means that's the third of my chord. So if I go down a third, so here's F sharp, I just jump down a third. What's that letter? That's a D. That means D is my root, and then I have to put one more stack third, one more above. So let me say that again. I see an F sharp. The 6 tells me this is first inversion of a triad. Therefore, to find the root, I go down a third, which is a D, because that's what comes from the key signature, not D flat, not D sharp. I write my D, I have my F sharp, and I need to have one more third above that. That's an A. D F sharp A is a major triad, so I just write an uppercase D. Coming up next, I have a C sharp in the bass with 6-5 written underneath it. 6-5 means first inversion of a triad. As you can see, it's, I'm, I'm assuming that you're, you have memorized the stuff we talked about last. Okay, That might be an incorrect assumption, right? So. For triads, 
And let's just review very quickly. If there's nothing, it's root position. If there's a six, it's first inversion. If there's a six four, it is second inversion. For a seventh chord, and this is stuff again for you to memorize, if there's just a seven, that is root position. If there's six five, that is first inversion. If it is four three, that is second inversion. And four two is third inversion. That's what those mean. Okay, so that is worth memorizing. So when I see six five, I know, aha, first inversion of a seventh chord. My note is C sharp. To find the root, I go down a third. So I'm sorry, C sharp is my base. Since it's first inversion, that means I go down a third to find my root. That means A. Then I stack from there. A, C sharp, E, G. I analyze that. Major third, perfect fifth, minor seven. That's a major minor seven. So I write the letter and a seven. So A7 would be my chord. Here I have a D with nothing underneath it. It means root position triad. D, F sharp, A. Just playing D major triad. Ooh, I made a little bit of a mistake here. I did not indicate the inversion of this last example. So I said D major triad, but I want to indicate the inversion by putting the slash and the F sharp. So this is a D major triad with F sharp in the bass. This is a D major triad with D in the bass. Same notes in the chord, different inversion. Here we have an A with nothing underneath it as we did here, so it will be another A major triad, same thing. Here we have an F sharp, but unlike here, there's nothing underneath it, so now it means root position. So F sharp, A, C sharp. F sharp, A, C sharp. That is a minor triad, so I write an F sharp, then a minus sign. Here I have a B, nothing underneath it, so it means root position triad. <clears throat> Notice I don't say root position minor triad or major triad because I don't necessarily know that right away. I just know it's root position. And then I write the notes that are in the key, from the key signature, from the rest of the scale. B, D, F sharp, I then analyze that and say B to D is a minor third, B to F sharp is a perfect fifth. This must be a B minor triad then. We're going to use our, our inversion knowledge again right here. A with a 4-2, four 4-2, two, four two, third inversion of a seventh chord. So if we have A as our seventh, we go down a third, down a third, down a third, and I'm just getting the notes that are from the key signature. So I have an A, down a third would be F sharp, down the sharp in the key signature. D, there was only two sharps in the key signature. And then finally B. So I get B, D, F sharp, A as the notes in my seventh chord. I analyze B to D, minor third, B to F sharp, perfect fifth, B to A, minor seven, a chord with a minor third and a minor seventh, but a perfect fifth is a minor seventh chord. So B minor 7 over A. That's how I would indicate that. Here I have a G sharp with a 6 written underneath it. That means first inversion of a triad. I write down my G sharp. That's the third of my chord. I go down a third from there. E, E, G sharp, B. That is my triad. That is a major triad, so I write capital E over G sharp. Here I have an A, as I've had here before and here again, so we know that's an A major triad, it's the same as before. Here's something new. I have a D natural with a 6-5 underneath it. So I write my D natural. The 6-5 means first inversion of a seventh chord. 
I go down a third to get to the root. That is my root. Then I stack B, D, F sharp, A. That is my B minor 7 chord again, but this time with D in the bass. I then come to this chord here. I have an E, but with a sharp underneath. When there's no numbers, it means root position triad, but I'm changing a note in the key signature because of this accidental. It means the third above. So if that accidental was not there, I'd simply write E, G, B. But that sharp tells me the third above the bass, which is our G, must be raised a half step, therefore coming G sharp, making this an E major triad. The A again, and there we have it. So as I said, this example is, is a little bit tricky because it asks us to modify with the accidentals to bring it up. This is actually in a major key. Normally you'd see these sharps when they're in a minor key because in a minor key, you have the relative minor and very often you'll find that the leading tone, and we're gonna talk about this coming up, so a little sneak preview, gets raised. So this one is a good challenge. This example here, and I'll ask you all to think about it, work on it, and, and uh, we'll, we'll touch upon this next time. So let's just get started quickly. Ask you to, for each chord, identify the root, the sonority, which is also, you can say, the type of chord, and the base position symbols, which is the same thing as saying figured base. So in this chord, I identify the notes. I look at them, I go G, G, B flat, D. So step one, right off the notes, G, G, B flat, D. Doublings aren't going to change the chord, so I can kind of ignore that there's two Gs. And I say G, B flat, D, which one's the root? I ascertain that the G is the root, G, B flat, D. Uh, that, that's a minor triad. And since the G isn't the lowest note, it means it's root position. That answers all my questions. The root is G. The sonority is minor. The base position symbol, you wouldn't write anything. You could put 5-3 if you wanted. But let's use the shorthand, because that's what most people will be using. This is the shorthand. For all our chords, use that. This is another G minor triad. G, the only difference now is that it's a different voicing. So instead of being in this order, now it's G, B flat, D, G. Still the same pitches. It doesn't change the root of the chord, which is still G, the sonority of the chord, which is still minor, and it's position, base position symbols, which is still root position. <coughs> Last one before I let you continue on your own. Here I have bottom to top, and I always look at things bottom to top. That's how harmony's built. F sharp, A, D, A. Again, the doubling doesn't matter, so I cross that out. F sharp, A, D. Which one of these is my root? This one's not in root position. So I have to make sure which one can I stack thirds on. The answer is the D, so that's my root. D F sharp A is a major triad, so I write a capital M. And it's the F sharp is the lowest note. The F sharp is the third of the chord. When the third of the chord is in the bass, it's first inversion. That is indicated with a six. That's how the form that you would answer this question as you would analyze uh, this example. All right, thank you so much. Have a great day.